You live. Hey, I just wanted to call and enjoy the show. Um, I'm a former equipment manager for Bethune Cookman under Terry Sims. Oh, wow. Uh, 2016 to 2019. And we haven't had a locker room since I got there. And I graduated. We were taking clothes to the laundry mat on trucks. After practice, we would load up the trucks and drive the trucks to the laundry mat. Wow. So for that president or interim president to get on there and say, oh, we have locker rooms, bro, we don't have nothing. They, the building that was the locker room, they had to knock it down because of mold. So there's nothing there. There's no building there. There's nothing. So, I mean, I appreciate the students and all the alumni that are stepping up now, but what was said needed to be said, and I'm glad it was said, and I'm glad that you guys are bringing more exposure to it, and I just appreciate the show, and I thank you for letting me call it. Oh. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Can you hear me? You there? Yes, sir. Okay, he's still there. Go ahead, all right. Sir. So, did you all? What was the what was the plan of action for you all and the team? Was there any documentation that provides any additional evidence to what you just stated? I mean, as far as everybody that's been involved with the program knowing about it, I don't. Me personally, I didn't take pictures because again, when I got there, I was really young and I just wanted to be a part of the team. I could never play football. I was born with a disability, so. To be in that position to get around a college team was just it for me. But when, like, my sophomore year came and my junior year came and I started noticing that just stuff was pretty out of whack. I mean, I guess it became, like y'all been saying, kind of normal. So I guess we all just kind of figure, like, one day it would get better. But seeing how it is now and seeing the videos you got showed of those new players and, like, knowing that I've graduated and it's kind of still the same, if not worse, is just, like, crazy like bro we have to be better and do something about it and that's why i'm glad that every so he said because i could tell y'all stories bro. we we had the stadium on practice days we shared the stadium with mainland high school so we have to stick stuff under the stadium like as a staff we we throwing stuff under the stadium there's been times where i put stuff in my personal car and drove it to the stadium for practice and drove it back to the school and like on Sundays after games, after we travel and stuff, we had to practice at the field at the school, which is the field is not really a field; it's just like a grass area. And we lay their stuff out out of their bags after it's been sweating. And you know, we had a trailer, so they would drive the stuff back and forth to the games after it's been in there. So like the players said, like it's building up mold, and then you basically put them back on the same thing over and over again. Oh so God. that's just what it was. Like that's just what we became accustomed to. And I think. Like I said, there's my adults. I don't know, like y'all said, maybe Coach Terry Sims has something to say, but as far as me personally, I didn't like go and take pictures just because, like, I know that's just what it was at the time. Bro, I believe you. Like, y'all. Huh? Like, like, there's just stuff that, as a, like, even, like, I'm speaking from a, a support staff standpoint. So it's just, it's just bad overall. Like, there's nothing. For them to really rehab with to get right from injuries there's like everything is just broken so I when you say everything let's go into everything because you're stuck because cookman has multiple uniforms yes we do they have so where do the where are the where are the other where do you all store them storage unit and where's the storage unit located like a U-Haul storage unit? Yeah. Right. Uh, the storage unit is probably about like 11, 12 minutes from the school. And we go there and everything that like from backpacks, like when we get like stuff for them, everything goes there and we kind of just have to go through it. Or like say on like a Monday, a Monday is like where we don't have practice. So we'll, as like equipment staff, we'll go to the storage unit and pick out what combination they they said they want to wear for the week and we'll get that ready. Um, start decaling helmets and trying to see who's going to wear what helmet, what size they are and stuff like that. So we basically worked out of the storage unit because like I said, they knocked down the locker room and they never put anything back up. So it was just an empty space. And we did, I guess they're still using the trailers, but we did, we did keep stuff in the trailer. Like the helmets, they used to be stacked up in a trailer and we would just go there Everything was just scattered everywhere, honestly. It was it was crazy. So what is the protocol? Let me ask you this. What is the protocol or regulation surrounding that? And 
you know, because somebody needs to go to that storage unit and show the university that this is where you all keep you all stuff. You know, somebody needs to like go there and unlock it and show like this is where this is. This is not a locker room. This is a storage unit 15 minutes away from campus where we store our stuff. Yeah. As far as me personally, I don't know what the protocol is, but I do agree on the fact that that no. they need to <laughs> yeah, they have no protocol. It's just it's just how everything is ran. It's it's really corrupt and messed up. Hey, but look, look. all I can say is as an alum, as a person that was really involved in the program and who basically kind of lived it is I'm just glad that you guys are that everybody's bringing awareness to it. Ed Reed, you guys are talking about it. A lot of people are talking about it now. So I hope that, and they even had a protest today on campus, the students' protest. So let me I hope let that me that ask you this last question and, before I let you go, right? Or before we let you go, yeah. what is the situation with the sharing of the helmets and the mold in the helmets when you were there? You okay, so when I was there, we did not share helmets. Okay. From what I understand, this is the first year that that's happened. They have double numbers, and whoever comes off the field who's wearing the helmet, they pass it to the next dude who is wearing the helmet. Then, you know, it kind of continues like that. Whoever comes off, pass them the helmet. They go back on, they pass them the helmet. When I was there, we never did that, but I guess worst came to worst, and that's what it came down to. Um, But that's just what I was told from – a player that I connect with. I didn't think that was true. I was actually watching the game on TV and I saw and I was like, yo, what is that? And they told me, it was just like, we share helmets because they got multiple players wearing the same number. So it's just easier that way for them to, whoever's on the field at the time, they wear it. And then when they get off, if you're on defense, you give it to the offensive player. When the offensive player come back, they give it to the defense. And you saw this on a, on a video, on a, uh, on a stream? Yeah, it was on. I think when they played UM, I noticed it. They played UM at the beginning of the season this year. And I seen it, somebody wear the same helmet. And I was like, yo, what is this? And I was, I asked, and then that's what they told me. So I was like, wow. Man, listen, but when I was there, go ahead. we go never ahead. had to do that. Uh, any, okay, go so ahead. this is just really, and listen, man, I, 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 I I applaud your courage because I'm not. We're not going to get your name. I don't care about your name. I just applaud your courage to come on here, call in, and tell the truth because that is what needs to happen for change to really see. There has to be more people like you with the courage to speak out on what is going on at this institution, regardless of what you know they feel is going to happen to them. So I applaud you for that. Let me ask you this: Were there any other yes, road issues? that happen in regards to pants, jerseys, gloves that you that you've seen or were a part of at your time being the equipment guy. Uh nothing that you guys didn't show on that video. Like they said they didn't want to wear gloves sometimes because they're moldy, get moldy. Um basically honestly anything that they leave in those equipment bags because after games, I mean you know everybody's trying to rush to get out the locker room and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's kind of just like they're just throwing everything in the duffel bag with the helmet and the pads. So by the time, like, say if we traveling, by the time we get back to the school, everything's all sweaty and moldy. We could just get new gloves. That's kind of what we did, especially with, like, starters and stuff. We'll just give them new gloves. But a lot of them, like like the player said in the video, they don't want to wear that stuff because it's nasty and moldy and sweaty. Like, it was one practice. We, as a staff, we took everything out and kind of tried to disinfect it. But, I mean... It really ain't work because you're talking about weeks on weeks on weeks of swapping out the same stuff, and so it's very hard as an ask for them as players to do what they need to do. And like I said, like even just with rehabbing, like cold tubs is broke and stuff like that. So it's just so it's if, really bad. If there's no locker room, where are the kids changing? I didn't even think about like where are the kids changing if there's no locker room? Okay, so. You, I know you say you've been to the stadium. So the stadium, they have those. They just change in there. But when we're at the school, shoot, you put your shorts on, you 
put your shorts on over your like your compression pads or whatever, you go to the cast and go to your room and take a shower. Or you take your pads, you take your stuff off right there behind the building, put your clothes back on and go to the cast and then take a shower or take a shower and then go to the cast. That's just how it was. Behind the building. And I guess. Yeah, like there's well, what used to be a building or the little shed thing that the players were referring to, you just go behind that and the little shed thing. Yeah, that the players are referring to that they store stuff in. You go behind that, take your, take the clothes off, put whatever you had in your backpack, because a lot of them, they just carry their backpacks with them, so they put whatever they want to wear in their backpacks. Go like that. Hey, man, I appreciate the call, man. You be safe.